Hello students, in this part we are going to learn about the connective tissue. Connection is very important. It may be an electrical circuit or a puzzle. It's incomplete in the absence of connections. We all need connections. Fundamentally, we all are social animals and are connected to each other by some or the other means. And in the same way, there are some connections inside our body also. And today, we are going to learn about the tissue that helps in internal connection. Yes, you are right, it's the connective tissue. The connective tissue is, connects our body and is the most abundant tissue present inside our body. The basic functions of connective tissue are protection, structural support, connection and binding, storage, transportation and immune function. Connective tissue can be classified into connective tissue proper, supportive connective tissue and the fluid connective tissue which can be further classified into areolar tissue, adipose tissue, tendons, ligament, bone, cartilage, blood and lymph. One by one, we will be learning about each one of them. So the first tissue that we are going to start is a loose connective tissue and in that we will be learning about areolar and adipose tissue. Areolar tissue, they are the part of loose connective tissue and in the loose connective tissue, the cells are widely separated from each other. Epithelium. We all have learned about epithelium. There is a tissue that lies just behind the epithelium. Yes, the friend of epithelium, the areolar tissue. Areolar tissue is found on the back side of nearly every epithelium in our body. Areolar tissue is the packaging tissue under the skin and around the organs and the function of the areolar tissue is to provide elasticity. Have you ever experienced elders pinching your chubby cheeks? Do you want to know what makes the cheeks chubby? It's the adipose tissue which consists of the cells called as adipocytes and these cells stores fat. So presence of fat storing cells makes the adipose tissue. Adipose tissue is located beneath the skin that means underside of your skin, around the eyeballs, kidney and stomach. The basic functions of adipose tissue is that it acts as a shock absorber around the organs. Since the organs they are very delicate so they need to be protected around a cushiony covering and this cushiony covering is formed by the adipose tissue. The next function of this tissue is insulation. Have you ever experienced in winter season you feel cold? So when you feel cold, what do you wear? We wear warm clothes. So in the same way, in our body also there is a covering which provides warmth to our body. And that covering is called as the adipose tissue. Now I think you are clear with the term insulation. Insulation means to provide warmth. We are done with the loose connective tissue. Now we'll learn about the dense or the fibrous connective tissue. Dense or fibrous connective tissue, there are of two types, tendons and ligament. Tendon joins skeletal muscles to bones and they are thick bundle of white collagen fibers which is tough and non-elastic. Ligament joins bones to bones and they are made up of yellow elastin fibers. To remember tendons and ligament, always remember TBM and LBB. TBM means tendon, bone, muscle. LBB means ligament, bone to bone. So you will never forget the tendon joins bone to muscle and ligament joins bones to bones. Now collagen fibers, they give strength. So these collagen fibers are present in tendons. So tendons are responsible to give strength and elastin fiber which forms the ligament is responsible for elasticity. Next connective tissue is a supportive connective tissue. As the name tells us it supports our body. Supportive connective tissue provides framework that means a proper structure. It provides support and it provides it helps us in movement and locomotion. In supportive connective tissue, we learn about bones and cartilage. The first structure that we are going to learn is cartilage. What is cartilage? Cartilage is tough, 
but flexible structure it is found between the bones external ear nose and the windpipe bones are hard and non elastic structure made up of calcium magnesium and phosphorus it's the map of venice city of canals what do you observe that there are number of water bodies connecting the whole land similarly inside our body also there are fluid connecting tissues that connects the entire body that is blood and lymph so first let's learn about blood blood consists of plasma and the blood cells plasma comprises of 55% of the entire blood and blood cells comprises of 45% of the entire blood the blood cells are rbcs wbcs and platelets let's learn about plasma and the blood cells with the help of a simple example suppose you have a beaker which is which has a mixture of water oil and sand what will happen if you allow the mixture for st to stand for some time the different components are going to settle at different levels on the top it would be oil followed by water followed by the soil or sand depending on their densities in the same way if you take a centrifuge tube and if you centrifuge it what will you obtain you will obtain plasma on the top followed by white blood cells platelets and red blood cells as debris so the supernatant that we obtain over here is the plasma that means plasma is the liquid in which the blood cells that is white blood cells platelets and red blood cells are dissolved now since you have understood the components of blood let's learn about the functions of blood over here we'll be learning about the functions of rbcs wbcs and platelets so first learn about rbc rbc supplies oxygen to each and every body cell wbc fights and kills the germs platelets is essential for clotting of the blood what happens if you get injured the blood starts oozing out of your body so the blood keeps on flowing or it stops after some time certainly the blood stops after some time that is because the platelets forms the platelet plug and does not allow the blood to come out the second tissue is lymph right now before learning about what is lymph let's learn how is it formed we all know that blood flows inside the blood vessels and lymph flows inside the lymph vessels blood inside the blood vessels that is in your artery veins and capillary flows with a very high pressure and when the blood reaches the capillary some part of the plasma along with the wbc gets out of the capillary and forms the lymph that is why lymph is called as the filtered blood now since you have understood about what is lymph and how is it formed let's learn about the functions of the lymph lymph lacks rbcs platelets and plasma protein it consists of only wbcs and the function of wbc is to fight and kill the germs so that becomes the functions of lymph also to fight and kill the germs